Hey guys, welcome to our session on uh, luxury travel today for our wave season. I'm so excited to hear, um, or, or to have, I should say, Angela Hughes here. You know, Angela, I was just thinking this morning about our relationship. I was getting ready this morning and um, I kind of equate it to like, two secret lovers. I mean, it's kind of weird because you, you know, guys don't know this secret. <laughs> know, you're always on the road. And then I'm so busy with Lily. And it's like, we're trying to like steal moments to talk to one another. You know? <laughs> I'm like, what time zone are you in? Or you're like, is it too late to call you? And I was just chuckling about it because I haven't actually seen your face in a while. So <laughs> So it's nice to have you here today. Um, so for everybody just joining us for the first time, I am Sheila Folk. I'm the CEO and founder of Travel Industry Solutions. I'm also a travel advisor just like you, which is why TIS was born. And I have my dear friend, Angela Hughes, here today with uh, Trips and Ships Luxury Travel. She owns a small boutique host agency that specializes in the premium and luxury space. And she also has Luxury Travel University. Um, she does some amazing destination training inside of LTU and is working on a few other training components to bring to the space, to the luxury space. And last but not least, she is a uh, world recognized influencer in the luxury travel space. So I just want to welcome you. Thanks so much for being here today. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. And it's really true. Um, Sheila and I first became friends when she called me to work with her brand um, when she was first starting. And that's how um, our relationship came to be. And it's kind of been a wild ride for us the last several years um, together. But no kidding. Um, it seems like wherever I am in the world, like I'll get a text and it'll be 7 a.m. and I'm calling her from Budapest this last week or wherever. We just keep it rolling. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here. Your product's amazing. And I'm so excited that you guys have all jumped on board to hear what we've got to talk about today. So thanks for spending time. Well, I see some uh, familiar faces, of course. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> I see both of you at the top of my screen. I can't see everybody here. So um, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody that our wave seasons, our uh, sessions are down and dirty. It's about 15 to 20 minutes of uh, each of our presenters talking to you about a topic that will give you three takeaways for your business. We will allow around 10 minutes for Q&A. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Of course, let us know where you're joining us from. I will also monitor the um, Facebook Live group. And uh, also as a reminder, we will upload all of the Wave Season videos to our YouTube channel at the end of our Wave Season series. And I believe we end tomorrow with Jennifer from Wanderlust Social. So um, also one more thing, if you guys did not hop over to the Facebook group yesterday, and grab the free lead magnets from Tima Travel, please do so. I put the links under the video and Colleen will customize three of those for your agency. So that information is there. So without further ado, I'm going to allow Angela to jump in. I know we're talking about three really important things if you want to move into the premium to luxury space. So go ahead, Angela. I'm going to let you take this away right now. Yeah. First of all, because we've only got 15 minutes, I, I speak in lightning speed, everybody. And my former students at the university will verify that. But I want you to take this first takeaway um, is cleaning up your overall look. Okay. You can work on your brand all day. You can work on your website all day. But if you cannot present and look amazing when somebody comes to the show, it doesn't matter what you've done behind the scenes, okay? And so Sheila and I are just going to go back and forth about some of those things. And, and I want to start first with the website. I go out to so many people's websites. And in my program, the Luxury Travel, Travel University, I do private consulting. And so I've had a lot of time to like work through people's ultimate brand, what they're trying to achieve. And I'd say 95% of the time, 
and I've lost a lot of friends this way. I hate their websites. You know, they don't reflect what the buyer wants to buy. Okay. So think about it. When you go out to other luxury brands, what do you see? And I want you to ask yourself that question. Um, I wish I had a worksheet in my hand to give you to write this down, but um, we'll make one. What does my brand look like? What do I want it to look like? When you go out to Chanel, when you go out to Louis Vuitton, when you go out to Gucci, BMW, Ritz Carlton, Mercedes, okay, there's a look. There, there, there's a vibe. If you're palm tree in it and zooming an airplane through it and, you know, some emoji emoji and dancing around TikTok, your look probably is not reflecting what other brands in the luxury space look like. And I cannot emphasize that enough because people are deciding now when they're dropping 25, 50, 75,000, they're going to buy that or an Audi. Okay. Those are the decisions they're making. Okay. I agree with you hundred percent simplicity. We talked a lot about this yesterday with mm -hmm. Colleen about keeping it simple. We didn't dive too deep though into the look of things. And I see this happen often and I see it happen really often with newer uh, advisors. And I always use this analogy, okay? When I first started my travel agency, I had the most stupid name. I'm not kidding. It was really dumb. And I thought that I needed to incorporate certain words for SEO, um, for people looking for travel deals, right. et cetera. So I'm just going to put it out there right now. The name of my company was Travel Deal Experts. Quickly changed that. I had, first of all, I had no idea about the travel industry. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what it looked like. I had, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so I quickly changed my name to um, something that was a little more timeless and um, simplistic. And it really fit not only with the customers that I already had in that moderate space, but it really amplified my authority in the premium and luxury space. So I see new travel advisors really focusing on, you know, words like, and I, I'm just pulling this out of the air, uh, you know, sips, sunsets, and sailing. You know, while it's really cute, it's really fantastic, it's, it's, it's limiting you. It really is limiting you because you don't know where your business is going to go unless you are just hell bent and you know you are set. Yeah. And the issue is, okay, let's say it's not so easy to change a name once you've been in business. Um, I actually, uh, my parents, when they evolved out of the business, I actually had to, you know, reincorporate all of these different things. It's a process. So you really need to make a decision what your name is and whether or not that's going to fit you for the long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people did that rebranding during COVID and everything. Now my name, Trips and Ships Luxury Travel, that's been our family for 30 years. So I'm not detouring from that because of legacy on that. But the thing is with Trips and Ships Luxury Travel, everything that we put out now has to represent luxury. And so if all of a sudden you're posting an NCL deal or, hey, I've got a hot sell at Sandals, we still sell sandals. We still sell NCL. I've got 62 advisors. You better believe we're pumping out mid-range brands just like the rest of you. But it's it's all in the wording. I tell my advisors, like, you attract what you put out there. Okay, we're going to talk about wording in a minute. And so I'm always putting out things that represent the premium and the luxury space consistently. Because the minute you throw out a carnival or, and I don't mean to rip on lower brands because they serve a purpose. Believe me, we still sell Carnival at our agency. But um, when you're putting out things that represent dill, bargain, best dill of the year, this hot special, la la la, now you're attracting the shopper. I'm attracting the person that's discretionary. And so everything that I'm going to put out in advertising is going to reflect something that works in that premium luxury space. I, I call it the comma method. Anything that has a thousand dollars or more commission on it is the types of things that I put out time and time again. 
And I've had people come to my agency and go, I just had this call yesterday. Hey, I don't know if we're in, you know, you say luxury, but we want to go to Egypt and we want to, and you know, they're going to buy an Alma Waterways cruise there. And I'm like, yeah, you know, there's so many terms for luxury. First of all, my luxury people are dropping 60 to hundred thousand dollars. There, there is such a range of what people think luxury is in terms of travel that pretty much probably 99% of you aren't really in the luxury space. You're in the premium space. And if you want to elevate your business and you've been in the mass market space, that's okay. Start upgrading people, start upgrading them to a suite, start upgrading them to a balcony, start adding on components. Now you've given yourself a 10% raise for next year. And that's going to start moving you into premium. That should be your goal. Because nobody, I, I probably look at 90% of the people, I'm like, you're not really in luxury, but I'm glad that we're, you know, I have a community of 25,000 of you now <laughs> following that trend. Well, one of the things too, that I always, uh, that I really believe in um, as well when it, because uh, I, I do believe there is a spectrum, spectrum of luxury, just like you. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I also believe luxury is tied to the level of service that you provide to your customers. You can have a customer who is purchasing a two or a three or a $4,000 trip and still provide um, unique, specialized, high touch service. And that is another way to actually convince your customers to allocate more dollars to their vacation fund the next time around. When you start to add those little special touches it actually can move your customers into another realm of, of spend or commitment with you. Do you find that to be the case as well, Angela? A hundred percent. And I don't know where I was just recently speaking, but I use the word like luxury is a feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a value. It's not, it's not a dollar. Um, you could spend five, you could spend 65. My $65,000 people sometimes don't think that that's even luxury. So it's a feeling. And the thing is, you want to be able to elevate your customer to the next level. And the premium space is a beautiful space to be in because then you can work on both, both sides of the market, but you can start moving people, your school teacher salary, who's saving up into a river cruise and you're going to be in the, the premium. So I'd say like, you know, get, get it out of your mind, like the luxury term, don't get hung up on that and be like, I want to move as many people over from mass market into premium. You've just given yourself probably a 10 to 30% raise just by shifting them out of sun, sea and sand destinations into more exotics, more into Europe's more into things that sell that have value. And then what really makes a trip amazing is authentic pieces. It's extra punches. It's adding on a private driver, it's selling insurance, all of a sudden those side components really start adding up. And, and now you're starting to make money. Okay. Insurance at 26% would be considered a luxury. That's a high ticket item. When my advisors don't sell insurance, I just want to be like, what are you doing? That, that's one of your best moving pieces right there. When you're charging fees, you're providing value. Now, let me give you a tip on fees really quick. And I know this is off script and we weren't going to go there, but I'm going there for a minute. My strategy on fees is always charge a service fee, three, four, five hundred dollars. Then use that fee to pay an assistant to do all of the back end work. Okay. Because now that assistant is doing making payments, making your Travify, you know, connecting on whatever needs to be connected. And you can use that mental space to now market and sell to more premium and luxury. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're spending all your time doing the paperwork and everything, now you're the assistant. Ooh, so I agree. Yeah. I agree with you. Even if you charge fifty dollars, yeah. Seriously, even if you start with fifty dollars, okay. With so something. start with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're already sixteen minutes into this. <laughs> So I mean, seriously, I, oh my gosh! And this is going to be the problem with you and I. Like we need to. I, I know. I know. We always say. It's been two, wait, it's been two hours that we've been on the phone. Yeah, oh seriously, you guys. Okay. What, what did we talk about for two hours? Yeah. Okay, so let, let me, I just want to really kind of focus uh, focus in on a few things and, and recap. So uh, website, wait, let's, let's because you and I can get all over the place sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, 
first we talked about website, your look and feel and the image that you want to present. So think about um, uh, luxury brands. Look at luxury brands, how they're presenting themselves, uh, the, the clean lines. I kind of equate it to a Scandinavian almost like look in terms of cleanliness. Uh, think about your name. What does your name uh, mean to uh, capturing the market that you're you're going after? Don't limit yourself unless you're intentionally doing that. Is am I correct in summarizing? Yeah, and that? I think that your photos have to totally reflect those destinations that you're going to zoom in on. If you have like your cousin's photo that they took of you, you know, outside of wherever in St. Lucia, beautiful, but you know. I, I feel like you need to have professional photos done of yourself mm -hmm. on there. I hate nothing more than a website that doesn't show who the buyer is or uh, who the seller is. And so I want to see beautiful, you know, do a brand shoot with yourself. So you're on there and then, and then also bring in, go out to Shutterstock and, and buy those photos that, that represent, I have people tell me all the time, I, I, we love your website just because of the photos on there, you know, mm -hmm. I've crafted like the best photos. And then let's talk about the terminology that you're using. Okay. There's okay, a lot so of we, different words. Okay. So, so we, so we talked about the website. Let's talk about uh, terminology. You know, luxury linguistics is um, something that I really want to focus on to help people better understand the words that they're using. I know you are a big advocate of this. So what do you mean by luxury linguistics and well, what, well, and, and how that, um, translates into your premium to luxury buyer. Okay. And I'm going to break this down because I love Chick-fil-A so much <laughs> and I literally eat a salad there every day, but what does Chick-fil-A say to you when you leave? Sheila, what do they say to you? <laughs> I don't go every day. Um, <laughs> what, what, was the word, what was the term that you used? Just oh, my minute. pleasure. My pleasure. My pleasure. Right. They always say my pleasure. And so there, there are certain words like in speaking with a customer. Um, and that would be something fun that we could put out a list of just things on my worksheet of, of just different words to use. Instead of saying, I, you know, uh, let's look at some words, um, exhilarating, precious. Um, this is a mysterious destination. It's surprising. It's, it's signature timeless. Um, I'm trying to just come up with words, um, um, elegant, enduring, unparalleled experience, you know, immersion, you know, talk, yeah. immersion, you know, some of them are overused, you know, immersion, authentic, you know, we, I, I hear them so much. I want to be like back burner on those, but, um, try to think of words when you're being descriptive with people and, and also on your website that, that strike authority. Okay. An unrivaled experience. It's graceful. That destination is the ultimate, you know, this is for the refined customer. This is for my discretionary spends, you know, and listen to how that takes you. It also takes you to like kind of a, a Gucci fill, you know, um, and people want that, that experience. They want, when they hear things like that, they're attracted by that verbiage. Absolutely. So unrivaled, striking, uh, graceful, you know, mm -hmm. exquisite, timeless, classic. And those are descriptive words that you can use throughout your website and your communication. And uh, there are also a replacement words for average phrases that you're using in your daily life. So it, this is not um, a new topic, you know, um, this has been around for forever in a day. Uh, there are actually trainings around this. Ritz Carlton actually trains all of their employees in, uh, they have a luxury linguistics training program uh, where they train many, I shouldn't say all, I don't know for sure because I don't work for Ritz Carlton, but I know that uh, some of the big brands, including Rick, Ritz Carlton, do some sort of a luxury linguistics training. So start thinking about how you're communicating especially, you know, I'm from South, <laughs> even though I don't have an accent. Um, I tend to want to say, hey, y'all, you know, little slang terms like that. I, I refrain when I'm around specific clients. 
and I have to catch myself. Would yeah, you not? I'm from outside of Boston, so we say wicked spot, <laughs> and I don't <laughs> usually use that too much. <laughs> so, yeah. So the thing is, I think the idea is, you know, again, you're competing in the arena of other luxury brands when someone buys, even in a premium. You know, anything from fifteen thousand and up, people are making a decision whether or not to spend it on that, or maybe their daughter's tuition. And so now, now you're being persuasive. You've got to use a persuasive argument to to help bring people in. You know, um, visual is so important. Um, do we have time to go to video? Let's talk about video. For yeah, we should because you are really one of the leaders in video, and we've seen your agency change dramatically over the last couple of years. And uh, I think that it would be important for everybody to understand um, how video can impact your overall growth and brand. Yeah, and I'll tell you a little bit about where that comes from for me. I actually, in 2009, the travel industry um, came to a halt. I don't want to scare anybody, but we had a stock market crash and there was a huge recession in the United States. And um, I probably had two to two and a half years where we weren't churning any business and you should be prepared because we could move into that arena again. But during that time, I was like, I want to do something different. I had four kids. I was like, I want to shoot some photography. And I ended up freelancing and shooting for the news and learned a lot of different PR skills for them. Um, and, um, you know, did some writing. I'm not a writer. I'm dyslexic. I mean, it's an odd thing, but when you're shooting photography, they want you to also write. Learned a lot on PR there as well. Um, also, I have a master's degree. I've taught on the university level. So I'm all about PR and those types of things. But interesting enough, that time period taught me a lot about how to tell a story. And so we've done so many different like workshops on storytelling. I'm sure Sheila has as well. It's really important when you're selling your brand to tell a story, that's what the news is doing every day. Um, I still do some work for Fox 35 TV here is just their, their travel um, contributor. And I'm in the Wall Street Journal today. So um, I think media is a really important like piece of telling in building authority. And so I would encourage you to be like reaching out to your local media to see if you can get on radar with them as, as their expert. Um, I quickly, you know, moved to Orlando when I did, when Fox 35 reached out, you know, and when Wall Street Journal reached out, like once you're kind of in their system as a quick text message, you know, no matter where I'm at, like Wall Street will call like yesterday, you know, I'm making my way home from Europe and, you know, can you do a quick interview on this? Yes, absolutely. And then, and then you have that authority built, but video is a very important topic because video really became something probably about five years ago for me, but it became really important during COVID. And um, I was probably one of the early um, onset for video um, when people started going to Zoom. We were already using video as a way of like getting, getting our message out on Facebook. But the minute COVID hit, I was like, hey, this is an opportunity where people are sitting home that we can quickly move to video to share our message. And we've got an audience here. And honestly, it helped boom my Facebook group to like 25,000 because prior to COVID, people weren't sitting around looking in Facebook groups and weren't looking for, a, you know, authority figures and travel or anything like that. And I was weekly going out using video like this. Um, Sheila was one of the early adopters with me that um, we started you know, talking about her brand. And I was doing that weekly with every brand. Now, no matter where I'm at, now it's a monetized. I mean, people are paying to do that with me, but um, no matter where I am in the world, I'm shooting video, um, even in, in giving marketing strategies, marketing tips for the Luxury Travel University or for my clients. I'm always using um, Instagram stories to show. You wouldn't believe how many people have bought travel off of my Instagram stories. Two quick tips though, when you're posting photos or videos, you've got to keep it at four or five at the max if it's photos. I hate nothing more than people who are like, hey, I went to Fiji and you've got three, four beautiful photos plus 61. <laughs> you know, nobody's I looking know. at the plus 61. They don't care about your bathroom at Sandals unless it's amazing. I mean, and to die for, and that's, that's what you're discussing. And I generally never try to sell travel with it. I know some people who do a lot of video and then they're like, and then you can book. And then they just ruin it with everything about trying to sell themselves in the, the, the context of the message. 
I almost, and Sheila, you can back me up on this. When I'm talking about a destination, I'm giving details about a destination, descriptive sentences about a destination. I'm teaching people. That's a professor in me, teaching, teaching, teaching people about destination. I rarely, rarely ever have to, and this would go against the grain of social media people, but I rarely have a call to action on there because I don't want people to feel like every single time they're following me, I'm calling out something to them. I want them, and the funny thing is in, in social media and in video and photos is people start following you because they generally become interested in you. So you mm -hmm. need to do a mix of yourself, your life, you, if you're never posting a photo of yourself or a video of yourself, start doing that. They want to see you. They don't always want to see the tropics, so forth. Well, I just want to uh, point out to a couple of folks here. I hope you don't mind that I do this, Angela, mm -hmm. but you know, during COVID, some of us had a lot of time on our hands and we were trying to reinvent ourselves. And I, uh, I remember when Angela first started, re really resurrected the group because you had not really paid much attention to the luxury travel social media marketing group. And you started getting on almost daily, weekly to do videos. And you would text me and say, nobody's on. Can you at least hop on? Because when you're starting out in that space, it feels very intimidating. And I know, Angela, so, you know, you've, you and Brian have, have taken on so many things in your life and you've always worked so hard to achieve your success. And it may have been a little bit daunting, but literally, what is it? Two and a half, three years later, you have a huge group. You've been able to monetize it. You have quadrupled the size of your agency. Your revenues have gone through the roof and you didn't build Rome overnight. It <laughs> yeah. was a process. And so for those of you on the call who say, I, you know, I'm not Angela Hughes. I don't know where to start. We all started at the same place. Yeah, we actually, she that. Sheila, we were talking one day. I, I remember this. I was out walking. It was COVID. And I was like, Sheila, you got to start a Facebook group. And the same thing. I mean, now you're at a thousand, you're doing videos, you got people on the call. And that's the thing. I'll tell you what it is. It's consistency. People who are consistent every single day in posting. And then maybe they opt for a video when they're traveling or a video while they're working. What? Because this is a question I get, like, what if you're not traveling? I'm traveling every other week, practically. So it's it's an easy, you know. I'm showing my life, whether I'm at home or whether I'm with my grandkids, which is only one, um, or whether I'm in Europe, I'm, I'm showing, what if you're just home and you're like, well, great, I'm not traveling for six months. What am I going to show? Sometimes I'll grab my phone and just be like videoing what's on my screen. Oh my gosh, I am just working on this trip right now to Tahiti. Look at this to die for video, you know, or look at this to die for villa and, and I can't wait for these people to use this, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be professional. I mean, you can be showing what you're working on, what people are interested in, you know, trends. Um, there's so many things you don't need to be traveling every single day. Um, and I know somebody just posted starting can be intimidating or it can be overwhelming. I get that. You need to just show up, show up and be consistent. And you don't need to feel like you've got to go lose 75 pounds to do this. I mean, we all need to lose 40, I, including myself, you know, <laughs> Sheila and I have had this discussion, like we're not seeing lower body right now, <laughs> you know, but, you know, everybody feels like they, they're not camera ready. And what's so funny is when I first started doing video, I was all hair, makeup, like I was doing the news. Now, like literally 12 minutes before I did this, I'm like brushing my hair, you know, just throwing on some makeup. Like my, my ability to like be camera ready has gone way low. My, you know, I have been standing in South Africa, wind blowing, you know, back here, you know, eyelash flying off, you know, <laughs> everything, you know, in South Africa. I, I shoot it wherever because people love just the realness of it. So I agree. Authenticity is, is really key in, in everything we do. Look, my hair is wet. You guys, you've seen my she hair just up out of the last bed, few days. We you know why? This together. Yeah, five I'm minutes usually ago. scrambling to even just get my makeup on. So I just slap yeah. it up, just blow dry my bangs, and I'm yeah. good to go. Um, but yes, I think authenticity. So Christy has a question. Is a classy animated video on a website out of the question? Um, I think it depends. I think it depends what the ultimate 
<clears throat> sorry, what the ultimate goal is. Um, I, I do like animation videos that describe what you do. And I'm going to tell you straight up what I don't like. I love TikTok. I love stories. The dancing, the crazy hand movements, trying to describe things. I, I feel like that that dumbs luxury down. Where I know that that's the TikToky thing to do, where you're dancing around and you're you're sharing a whole bunch of things, singing with your hairbrush and everything. You you've got to have as the advisor now. This is more than the website. You've got to be reflecting as the advisor class. People are buying class from class, and this isn't about color. This isn't about race. This isn't about even demographics because I know people who are selling a lot of luxury travel who come from, you know, marginalized backgrounds. Okay. And so what I'm saying is you've got to walk the walk. You've got to talk the talk. And, and this is what I said when I was on um, the Travify webinar a couple of weeks ago, I was like, that doesn't mean you have to go out and all of a sudden buy Gucci and, you know, you, you know, buy expensive clothes and everything. It's not, it's about you being classy on the inside and reflecting that on the outside. It has nothing to do with the surroundings. Right. And so everything that you're promoting now is, is what looks and feels premium. Well, one of the things too, I like to stress to everybody is your digital footprint is, is permanent. So you need to be thinking about your digital footprint and how you're representing yourself. Look, if you've got a rocking body and you have the best boobs on earth and you look amazing in a bikini, good for you, girl. Tell me you're so hang over that pool in the Maldives with the best. That's of right. <laughs> but what I don't want to see as a consumer or a potential customer of yours is an overhead selfie like this as your Facebook profile picture with your barely covered boobs. It's just, it doesn't speak to the, if, if you really want to move into a specific space and a target market, it doesn't speak to that market. It doesn't. It's not going to serve you well. So make sure if you really want to put certain things out there, um, you are fully aware that your digital footprint is, is permanent. Um, it's just it, it can come up and bite you in the butt when you're three years ahead of, of your business or three years down the line in your business. And you, and you didn't think about that. Uh, another thing too, I'm a real big believer in this, uh, particularly if you have friends I'm sorry, clients who are part of your Facebook group, uh, you can disagree with me. That's okay. Um, but I don't believe we should be talking about politics, um, uh, divisive topics, and, um, you know, religion. If you plan to invite people into your private space that are customers or potential customers, um, remaining neutral is really, really, really um, important. And if you believe that everybody has a right to their opinion, then, um, you know, you should kind of leave that out. I will tell you my top, 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 top tier clients, my top three clients that literally drop 300 to 500 grand a trip. We do not see eye to eye politically. We don't. And um, we respect each other's opinions, but I don't bring it into my, my social groups. So I would say that's another key uh, piece. That's an opinion. Yeah, of mine. I might just add on to that. Like, I, I'm really a big fan of Facebook groups, not the page. The page, you know, you're losing algorithm. Probably less than 2% are seeing your page. Groups are where you can have dialogue and conversation. Um, I'll post a lot of my deals dills see i hate that word i'll post a lot of my you know offers offers let's go to offers i mean look i've even got to correct myself but you know whatever like the the daily dig is um there i'm not posting those on my main feed a lot of people follow me on my main feed i probably have 4600 people probably half of them are travel industry people i really don't even know at this stage because 
I've got probably over 30,000 followers on Facebook now. But the thing is like, that's where my family is. That's where my friends are. I'll still include like my travel there. That's where I'm posting my daily life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now in my Facebook group, that's where I'm posting what the offers are, you know, what the deals are, whatever we're doing, whatever we're posting. Um, my daily feed is my daily life. And the, the great thing about that is people want to see you as somebody that's got integrity, someone that's got moral standing, someone that's trustworthy. So yeah, my whole life, I, I'm a religious person. Sometimes you're going to see church in there. Um, yesterday I posted about the Royals, asked if anybody was watching Henry and, or Harry and Meghan, you know, geez, if you want to get like good Facebook flow, post about the Royals. I had no idea how many people <laughs> are attracted to that topic until yesterday. You know, maybe I'm posting about my cooking. Maybe I'm posting about my trip, my kids. You know what I love about that is people now are starting to see a full picture of me and I, and I'm legit. You know, you don't have to follow me for long to know that I'm a humanitarian. You don't need to follow me for long to know that, you know, I moved refugees across Ukraine this year, you know, and, and now people are looking at me as, as a legit person they want to do business with. If they're never seeing individual real pieces of your life, then they're not going to trust and value you. And so you need to put yourself out there. And I know people have a concern with that. Like, I don't want to show my kids. You have to make that decision. I don't want to, you know, get too in depth with my life, my house, whatever. Um, you have to decide what level you're comfortable with that. But I'll tell you, once people start following you, and I used to teach this at the university, people in social media will become attracted or detracted by your story. Do you ever find that you're following things that you don't really even care about? Like all of a sudden you followed like this whole episode of, you know, Yellowstone, but you didn't even care. And now you're in a Yellowstone group and, you know, and you're like, how did I all of a sudden become interested in Yellowstone or whatever the topic is? And it's because when you see it enough, it, you know, you become attracted to it. And it's I the agree. same with like Sheila's saying, religion, politics, whatever. And you start to build opinions based on the narrative that you're seeing daily. And you want that to be positive with you and not negative. So. Well, we are, I can't see without my glasses. Gosh. We are 1240, honey. <laughs> I hate this. 1240. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap this up. So if anybody has questions, you feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, unmute yourself. Show your beautiful face on camera and um, let, let us know if you have questions for Angela. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up today. And just remember that we'll have, we'll keep these in our Facebook group for the next few days, and then we'll move all of the videos over to our YouTube channel. Angela has promised that she's going to put out a worksheet for you guys. Literally, she just landed. She texted me last night late. Um, <laughs> And, and I said, don't worry about it. We'll go ahead and post it within the next few days in the group. Um, she, I think this is the first time you've been on U.S. soil in a couple of months. Um, you may have touched down once or twice for a day or two. Uh, however, uh, we will uh, post a your free tips. Whatever we're doing. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I think you wanted to focus on some terminology that they could use yeah. in their well, everyday we'll practice. Something's going to be beneficial from this. Okay, and uh, and then we will um, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. We'll have Angela on again too when she gets ready to launch her. Uh, we're in my group, yeah. Oh, please! Before I forget, how can people reach you? Yeah, so luxurytraveluniversity.com, but. My Facebook group, where you'll be seeing more of Sheila in 23 as well, is Luxury Travel Social Media and Marketing. Um, Let me go ahead and pull it up so that I can put the link here in the chat. Yeah, we've got all types of stuff cooking over there and tons of suppliers in there that you can connect with. You can ask any question in there. Um, if you need advice, if you need social media advice, if you need um, a supplier, if you don't know how to do something, you know, and I'm really big on the beginner joining us. You do not have to feel like, you know, one thing I do say to even my people at my agency it takes two to four years to build a business and travel. Mm -hmm. So don't fall out early and don't feel like if you don't have it going, you know, mm -hmm. then you're, you're behind start 23 is your year, you know, 
So you do have um, your social media group, which includes yep. uh, advisors as well as suppliers. You've got yep. an incredible list of suppliers. You have a small boutique host agency. I know you open up membership a couple yep. of times a year. So how can they get on the list to receive notifications when you open up membership for your host agency? Yeah, so you can just reach out to me on Facebook. Um, you can also join our... <laughs> Our, sorry, our mailing list on the Luxury Travel University site. Um, okay. I open up uh, spots two times a year, usually. Um, okay. I like to keep it small. I like to keep it quaint because we're working with a certain type of client. And the thing is, we're taking, we take new agents, but we're also taking agents who just want to move out of where they're at. You know, we want to elevate them to like the next level. And so we do a lot of, a lot of custom training in there. And I do a lot of training with my advisors. So and I know you also uh, do a lot of private consulting one-on-one, -on -one, many of our TIS customers, uh, even those who have been in the business 20 plus years may just grab an hour of your time or a, a group of sessions. It's so, funny, it's actually, my, it's actually a lot of my my one-on-one -on -one clients are people that have been in a long time because they've had to learn to pivot from what we did back when you know I started 30 plus years ago. You know, we've changed the model so many times. Mm -hmm. And it's changing now. We didn't speak luxury even like six, seven years ago. That wasn't really a terminology we used. So, okay. so they can go to Luxury Travel University for that information mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks well, for having thanks so much for being here today. Yeah. I'm sorry we can't have lunch with while your kids are here. So we'll find a time <laughs> in January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me, everybody, and reach out with questions. So this was fun. All right. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you guys here tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.